As amusing as this footage of falling astronauts may be, each trip, slip, and misstep could have drastic consequences. In this clip, from the final few moments of Apollo 16, before the crew head back to Earth, astronaut Charlie Duke decides to try and beat the high jump world record, a decision which could prove fatal. Despite months of intense training, all of the Apollo astronauts struggled with staying upright on the moon. Some of the falls were even ordered by NASA in order to better understand the differences in locomotion on the moon. This fall was so serious, however, that Charlie Duke almost cracked his suit and exposed himself to the vacuum of space, a fate that would have seen him instantly lose all his air and die before fellow astronauts could drag him back to the lunar module. In later interviews, Duke said, My heart was pounding. John Young, my commander, came over and looked down and says, That wasn't very smart, Charlie. And I said, Help me up, John. And I got real quiet. Charlie, that ain't any fun, is it? That ain't very, that ain't very smart. Well, sorry about that. Right, now we do have some work to do. An astronaut's backpack contains all the essential life support systems, and without it, astronauts would be exposed to the vacuum of space. Made from fiberglass, it wasn't designed to sustain an astronaut falling on top of it. The suits were in fact a major hindrance for the astronauts, as their bulky and rigid design often meant moonwalkers could not bend down to grab objects and ended up using special tools to lift things off the floor. If they did need to reach the surface, they would have to jump in the air and use the landing to compress the suit at their knees. Picking objects up from the floor was so difficult that in some instances the film resembles a comedy sketch. In this clip, taken from Apollo 17, astronaut Harrison Schmidt is having such a hard time that Mission Control asks fellow astronaut Gene Cernan if he can go over and help Twinkle Toes, please. Hey, Gene, would you, have, would, would you go over and help Twinkle Toes, please? Gene? The Apollo missions were full of incidents where the astronauts would ask Mission Control if they could do things for fun. Good humored wisecracks were frequent between the astronauts and Mission Control. Throwing things around was a favorite among the moonwalkers. And while always vigilant, NASA saw it as good science at the same time. I'm your host, Alan, and you're watching Elder Fox. Harrison Schmidt described the moon as walking on a giant, infinite trampoline. At just 17% of the Earth's gravity, it presented some real problems for the astronauts. They would have to learn how to walk efficiently, and NASA even discovered that walking and skipping on the moon consumed the same amount of energy. In this clip, an astronaut can be seen pretending to ski down a hillside. If walking on the moon was tough, driving would present an even bigger challenge. Apollo 15 was the first mission to include a lunar rover. 
It weighed around 500 pounds, was designed to fold up to fit inside the lunar module, and reached a top speed of around 8 miles an hour. Although this speed seems low, the surface of the moon is littered with small craters and rocks, and so it is more comparable to driving a dune buggy. As for the astronauts who drove it, they described it as being very fast and exciting. The lunar rovers were a huge success, paving the way for the Mars rovers, Spirit, Opportunity, and Curiosity. Also, NASA now has its eye on developing what it calls a space exploration vehicle. This stunning vehicle has a pressurized cabin and two spacesuits, so the astronauts can jump out whenever they feel like it. As fun as the lunar missions were, the astronauts had to stick to a tight schedule. Fun was not scheduled into the mission plan, as every minute was consumed by meticulously planned experiments. In this clip, Harrison Schmidt of Apollo 17 is sent to deploy an experiment package in a place away from rocks and craters. Lugging the bulky package, Harrison becomes severely out of breath and his heart rate rises to 140 beats per minute. Mission controllers advise him to carry the package on the folds of his elbows and remind him that he is 10 minutes behind the timeline. He sets his suit to maximum cooling and takes a small break at the site. Hey, let me enough room to deploy the heat flow. I'm going to. I'm looking for a place away from craters and rocks. That's why I didn't land up there. Okay, and right now you're about 10 minutes behind the timeline, yeah. Jack. But what did we leave on the moon? There is a family on the moon, and they've been there for over 40 years. Charlie Duke, the youngest man to walk on the moon, before boarding the rocket, asked his children if they wanted to come with him. His children obviously wanted to go with him, but little did they know he would end up leaving them there. This photograph has been on the moon for over 40 years, and on the back it reads, This is the family of astronaut Duke from planet Earth, landed on the moon April 1972. Their fascination with leaving things on the moon didn't end there. Gene Cernan carved his daughter's initials into the lunar dust. Apollo 15 left a small statue to commemorate fallen astronauts, and a golden olive branch representing world peace was left by Buzz Aldrin. Aside from a few other personal effects, the main thing astronauts left on the moon was trash. Scientific experiments dominate the landing sites, with plastic packaging and even astronaut poop. Yet there is a very good reason for this. NASA decided that the more things they left up on the moon, the less weight they would carry on their way home, which allowed them to bring more rocks and samples back to Earth. Are we going back to the moon? We have done our best to find the clearest moon footage for your viewing pleasure, yet it is still not good enough. Because we at Elder Fox really care about our videos, we have decided on launching our own mission to the moon to capture some really high quality footage. Okay, maybe that's a little more difficult than we imagined. Luckily for us, in 2019, NASA announced they are returning to the moon. The goal is to land humans on the lunar south pole by 2024. NASA will work alongside commercial industry to deliver payloads to the surface of the moon. This method will ensure the sustainability of moon exploration with its high costs. The footage and science we will gain with our current technology will prove invaluable for all of humanity. The missions will prove as a testing ground for space habitats that could eventually launch us towards Mars. One step closer to rescuing our beloved Opportunity rover. What would you do if you had one day to spend on the moon? Leave your answer in the comments below. In my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. 
Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe.